TikTok can be a great place to find cool memes, clips and burn some time. But sadly, it's also a breeding ground for scammers. With nobody really fact checking you, anyone can claim to be a pro coach without anything actually backing it up. And if you sell the lie well enough, you can turn a blatant scam into a full on profession. Our subject of discussion today is a person named Frosty, a TikTok coach and self acclaimed pro player who has found himself in hot water recently because of his misleading information, his bad coaching and terrible responses to the criticism. This coach claims to have coached thousands of players despite only being in platinum himself. And with all of this in mind, I start to ask the question, how deep does the scam actually go? In this video, we'll be going over his misinformation, the bad coaching, and a terrible response to criticism that led us to today. And as a quick disclaimer, don't let this video be the reason for you to go and harass this person. I'm shedding light on it and I hope that people won't interact with him or book any sessions with him after this, but don't go and harass him, don't send any messages or anything like that. Let's not be weird, okay? Thank you. Let's move on with the video. Misinformation can range from getting the color of a shirt wrong all the way to saying someone was murdered when in fact they weren't. Nowadays, misinformation seems to be running rampant in our society and everyone bends the truth to either further their narrative or garner more attention. Politicians, news platforms, articles, all are propagators of misinformation. Most of the time, you can get the misinformation for free, but what happens when you pay to get misinformed? The first bit of misinformation that I saw about this guy was in a clip where he was teaching a client about the colorful wonders of flatline recoil. Now, this normally wouldn't be a problem until he decided to say, this. So if you're looking at the flat line, you pick it up. Do you notice that has a side to side recoil, same as an alternator? If you actually look at the left and right hip fire reticle or the crosshairs, it actually is two triangle patterns only go left and right. The reason it doesn't have a vertical or southern um, hip fire reticle there is actually because it does not have a vertical recoil control. Uh, you're telling me that the flat line doesn't have vertical recoil? What? The fact that he genuinely believes that is really absurd to me. And no, the flatline has vertical recoil. It's bad enough that he believes this himself, but presenting this so boldly to what I assume to be a paying client is just wrong on so many levels. This may seem like a minor error, but it only gets worse from here. Tell me guys, what's the best way to get out of a Horizon ult? Well, if you're frosty, you probably responded like this. Back, play it back. Yeah, we're gonna wanna get to the back. In this clip, our friendly coach Frosty seems to imply that a horizon ult is less effective if you crouch walk out of it. I don't know where he got his information from, but this is just not true. The best way to avoid a horizon ult is to shoot it as soon as you get ulted. Trying to crouch walk out of a horizon ult greatly reduces your chances of surviving that encounter. Take a look at what actually happens in lobbies higher than platinum. You get nade spammed and shot at immediately after a horizon ult. But sadly, Frosty hasn't made it out of platinum and gotten into lobbies where this happens. Although this piece of information was pretty funny, it may not be as funny as the next piece of misinformation. This coach seems to have the itch to mislead his viewers and clients in any way that he can. In one of his TikTok clips, he teaches his clients something blatantly wrong about the crypto drone banner scan while trying to act like he's the smart one. Do you not know that about your character? You can just take it out, ping that thing from any distance, it'll tell you anyone within the POI. This entire name, location, big mod A, so it pretty much scans that whole POI. Okay, so if we just don't acknowledge that he just called it Big Made, uh, what? No, scanning the banners doesn't tell you who's in the nearby POI. It tells you about how many enemy squads are within 200 meters of the crypto, not the drone. He's giving false information while simultaneously acting like he's gigabrain. I guess as they say, ignorance is bliss. It wouldn't surprise you to know that despite all that I have mentioned, there are still multiple instances of him propagating misinformation, some of which include a misconception about the running speed with heirlooms. He believes that they slow you down, which is false. There are bugs which have occurred in the past, but saying heirlooms slow you down definitely is just flat out wrong. A misconception about catalyst walls and a negation of aim assist. He believes that cat walls completely disable aim assist, which is wrong. And another misconception that he disseminates, this time about Bangalore ults, implies that there is a certified 100% method of dodging Bangalore's ults. And this one is also false. 
he also spread some misinformation about the spiders on storm points and the loot that they provide. And these are just some of the plethora of situations where he has spread the wrong information. I would like to reiterate once again that this is a serious problem because people are actually spending money on his coaching sessions or getting the TikToks and actually believe that what he's saying is true because he comes off as a very smart or charismatic guy. If it was free, it wouldn't necessarily be as troublesome, but when you spend money on a self-acclaimed top quality coach, you shouldn't be fed straight up lies or misinformation. Your knowledge should be improving and not regressing. But what would you expect when you hire a TikTok platinum coach? The art of coaching is one that requires patience, skill, and knowledge from proven experience. The best coaches oftentimes have a lot of accolades in the game and deeply understand the game from the basic fundamentals all the way to the highest complexities. To call yourself a pro coach means you should at least be in the higher level skill brackets, but Frosty seems to think otherwise. I strongly disagree as there's only one situation where you would want coaching from someone who is worse than you, and that situation is exclusive to the upper echelons of the Apex player base. I'm talking about real pros. Teams like Team Solo Mid, for example, have coaches who help them analyze the game and think about strategies, drop spots, rotations, things like that, so they can focus purely on the game. Last time I checked, Raven wasn't a predator. <laughs> In this section of the video, we'll be talking about the numerous occasions of bad coaching that he offers to his viewers and his paying clients. In one of his TikToks, when asked about the solution to beating controllers and their aim assist, meters, and it has 0.6 of a strength, don't get within 70 meters of roller players. Just don't get within 70 meters of roller players. Which isn't wrong, but what happens in situations where a 70 meter distance isn't possible? For example, in an actual team fight or an endgame. By his logic, if you get close enough to a roller player, you just die. Which, again, isn't necessarily wrong, but there are other tips on how to deal with it. For example, don't overextend against a controller player, try to play head glitches, make sure to push with a team, act as if they're an aimbot and you will do a lot better. But just succumbing to losing because you're within 70 meters is just not feasible. Apparently these are things that seem very obvious to most people, but apparently not for Frosty. Charge rifling a controller player from 200 meters away does seem more in line with his playstyle. So if you ask Frosty, next time you see a controller player, just run away 70 meters. And if you want to make sure that you get to my videos on your feed again, make sure that you have subscribed to the channel because it helps me out a lot as well. Thank you. Now this one is a little bit more serious and a pretty big coaching error and just flat out malpractice or bad advice which occurred when someone asked frosty on how to get out of the gold rank and he responded with this stop playing your teammates rp that's the number one way to get out of gold if you're solo queuing right now especially with griefing stop playing your teammates rp player stick to a strategy that you set in place if they want to come with you that's awesome they have the freedom of choice though to not and you can't judge them if they don't want to if they want to die that's their life some people enjoy the fast pace now, if you follow his advice, you will get out of gold, but you will also run into one very big issue. When you finally get into Platinum, you'll immediately realize that the skills that you could have learned in gold by actually playing the game, you'll now have to learn in a much harsher environment. You'll have no idea how to play in Plat, because all you have been doing in gold was dodging fights, encounters, and gained virtually no game sense because you most likely were just ratting. You'll begin to lose badly every match, you'll die without knowing why, and at a certain point, you'll start to hate yourself for playing the game at all. These are some of the consequences when you don't actually improve in game, but still rat to the next rank. Another silly coach moment was when one of his viewers asked him a very specific question about how they should be a good Valkyrie player, and he responded with that they should just get better at the game. So of course, if someone would ask me how to become a good Pathfinder main or a good Seer for example, instead of assuming that they probably know how to play the game in general, I guess I should just respond with, just get better overall, just get good. Which is obviously world class advice. I'm suspecting the reason Frosty came up with such an answer at the moment was because he simply don't know how to be a good Valk and is trying to give very general advice to cover up the lack of knowledge on the subject matter. But obviously this is a really bold claim, what do I know? Maybe he does know how to play Valk really well. You know, he clearly seems to know a lot what he's talking about, that's for sure. And I want to stress one thing. These clips I'm showing you aren't just things that we went into his Twitch and 
clipped out of context or anything. No, he took these clips himself and changed the format and posted them on social media. So he clearly stands by this and it really illustrates the delusion. In his streams and in his TikTok clips, he does claim to be a professional coach so much that you wouldn't expect unprofessionalism from his part. Well, in this clip here, we have Coach Frosty completely disrespecting his client's time by eating and having them flick their mouse from one stationary rampart wall to another. Now, some people in the comments are already typing, oh, he's helping him find his sensitivity. And while that may be true, and I did make a video about something like this, the concept of finding your sensitivity is a bit of a scam. And as a professional coach, you should be professional enough to understand that drills like this are a complete waste of the client's time. And you can always tell him how to do it and that he can practice it in his own time. And then moving on to something more beneficial is much more respectful of your client's time. Most of the time, clients usually ask the question, I don't know what sensitivity to play, help. And instead of burning the client's money and time, you can tell them what is proven to be good and what works for most people and how to find it, but you don't have to actually sit there with them as to figure it out. How would you feel if you went to the gym to meet with your trainer in the hopes of getting fit? And instead of helping you with proper workouts, he's eating lunch and telling you how to, I don't know, smile at him for 20 minutes of your 45 minute session. Obviously a bit of an exaggeration, but you get my point. Oh, and also Frosty, if you're watching this, please stop eating during your coaching session. That wasn't the only clip of you doing this. In this next clip, there will be a bit more subpar advice. I do want to add, though, this could just be about how he approaches the game, but I don't believe that the way Frosty approaches the game will make you better. You want to rotate in the very first time to the main side of the circle. That way you don't have to move that much in the in-game circles. It's basically implying that the first thing you should do after you land is begin to head into the ring in round one. His logic seems to be based on the rat mentality, which of course he calls a strategy. And a common theme in his coaching seems to be to teach his clients to avoid as many fights as possible. And doing this won't actually make you any better at the game, it'll just make you better at ratting. There are numerous reasons why you wouldn't want to rotate into the ring first, but it seems to me that placement points are his top priority. And to close it all out, we have this clip where he explains inventory management. And honestly, it's not too bad of a clip until you realize that he doesn't even mention cells. Like, <laughs> whatsoever. So if I don't have a bag right off the bat, I start with three stacks of whatever my main gun is. So right now I'm rocking the R301. Two stacks of the backup gun. So that's going to be the Sentinel. It's going to be a P20. Um, even if it's going to be an SMG, I try to run a car that can either integrate with this or um, that's where you'll see another stack come in over here. So I carry one ultimate heal, one full heal, one full heal. This could be minis or larges. It doesn't matter. All I need is that fully stacked and that fully stock. Now here, with these two extras, I like to either run one nade, an extra mag of this ammo, one nade, an extra round of heals, either shields or health, depending on, you know, if I'm outside or close circle, that's just an evaluation thing. A nade and a ultimate accelerant. And unless you play certain legends or in certain ranks or in certain levels of play, you don't actually need an ultimate accelerant. So I fundamentally don't agree with this inventory advice at all. And there are tons of other occurrences of him giving really bad coaching, which we won't be able to get into today, but this isn't something that you would expect from someone who calls himself a pro coach. So obviously I wouldn't be talking about this guy if it wasn't for the fact that people actually have picked up on this and have been discussing it extensively on Twitter. It's safe to say that the community wasn't exactly supportive of his bad coaching endeavors and his claims of being a pro coach or a pro player. But what was his response? It's not because I hit plat without even trying or the fact that I have over 5,000 games on PC just in the last five seasons. This is just a crazy response. He hit platinum without even trying. That is, that, that is just amazing. Let's give him a round of applause for that one. A standing ovation even. He hit plant without even trying. And in the same clip, he claims that he creates resources for his clients to use. And you might wonder what that's all about. So let me show you. He sells loot map images on his website for $3 each. This is data mine information that is publicly available with a quick Google and he's selling it to you for free dollars. <laughs> Although I am not entirely sure whether he does data mine it himself, but I highly doubt that since he has expressed his avoidance of data mining. It is more than likely that he just copied images from one of these Apex utility websites, but hey, 
Three dollars is three dollars. And while that might just be one of his responses to a fan, he would respond much more egoistically to questions about his pro status. A prominent coach and European Pro League player called Rondon went into his Discord to ask Frosty about his claims of being a pro player. Rondon didn't really go in with any malicious intent and ask something along the lines of, hey, I saw you on TikTok and I saw you claim that you're a pro player and a coach, could you back it up with any accolades? And seemingly without giving it any second thought, Rondo was banned from the server, which further removes the facade of this self-acclaimed pro player. And potentially to prove that he is skilled or pro player or whatever, Frosty began to look for a team to play in the ALGS Challenger Circuit Tournament within his own Discord. So it almost comes off as a bit of a panic response, something like, oh, look guys, I'm in the ALGS, see? See? And this was really funny because he started looking for the team after registrations had closed. And then he had to wait a whole month for the next one. Although obviously he could have been looking for a team for the next challenger circuit and he was just really early on it. What do I know? But what was insane to me was the fact that he was looking for a team within his coaching discord. How are you going to play the ALGS with people you're supposedly helping to get better? How? <laughs> I did, I mean, I did something like that. We got to round four, it went great, but I'm me. You know what I mean? Barring Frosty, these are people who are struggling to get out of gold and have probably never played a second of comp in their lives. However, in this earlier TikTok, he does claim that he has coached Masters players, but I find it very hard to believe as he flexes and gets excited to get a 2K. Oh, I am hurting this guy. Let me farm him, let me farm him. Oh, bro, I'm farming them both. Die! This is my issue every time I get close to the 2K on Bloodhound. He did end up finding a team to play with this last CC tournament, and in the tournament, he performed about as well as you'd expect. I don't need to. Okay. Okay. Right in front of us. Three, two, one, and boost! Shit, they got one. Shit, they got all of us. He ended up getting second rounded, and not without some controversy. He was accusing some teams of teaming, which was proven to be false. To explain what happened here in competitive Apex, there are times where you have to coexist with your opponents, so either of you just don't die first. Because whoever makes a first move will most likely end up dead due to a third party or some other variable. Coach Frosty should know about this if he hadn't been lying about everything. He is not a pro player, he's not in the pro league, and I don't think he should call himself a pro coach. Finally, his response to him having a 0.77 KD is amazing. He claims that the reason his KD is so low is that he jumps off the map to spectate and to coach his clients. This is easily faulted by the fact that another of his TikToks shows that he owns a Smurf account. He spectates them on a Smurf account. And also, if your kill death ratio is so low because you jump off the map every time you coach a client, you either don't play the game at all or you coach so many clients that it offsets your kill death ratio. I'm just saying there's no way that's why it is so low. And his general response to any form of criticism has always been to either block, ban, or insult anyone who doesn't see things his way. I personally think it would be more beneficial to him if he actually replies in a clear, cohesive manner like an adult who is 30 years of age. Throughout this guy's entire situation, I can't help but find a similarity between Coach Frosty and Water Gotham. In Water's case, his ego ruined his career, and for Coach Frosty, that's currently happening. He responds to every form of valid criticism with, oh, you're just a hater, I'm going to report you. And obviously, it's a wild comparison because, you know, Water Gotham did some pretty bad things and Water Gotham actually made good content. But I just want to draw that similarity because Frosty's own ego is putting all of this to light. And if he would have just kept to himself, nobody would have known how much of a scam his coaching seems to be. So before anyone gets on me, don't call me crazy for drawing up that similarity. And as we draw close towards the end of the video, I'm sure a lot of you people are going to be asking, Otter, why did you make this video? Why is this a problem? Why can't you just mind your own business rather than picking on smaller content creators? To answer your question, I can't let go of it. I just can't. There's money involved, there's money being charged, and there is time being wasted. If you have a coach, a terrible one, mind you, marketing himself as a pro player or a pro coach, when he is in fact neither, it's false advertising, which not only hurts the community, but it also hurts the coaches that are professional. It hurts the coaches that are good at what they do, 
because there are so many other scammers, it's not just Frosty, he's just the best example of what's going on, that constantly grift the community for their hard-earned money that it could have spent on my merch. <laughs> And it hurts to see the less skilled members spending their hard-earned money and time on a scam in the hopes of getting better at the game, when they just won't. Again, Coach Frosty is one of many cases of this regular scam, and I hope that he will serve as an example to the community of what not to do as a coach. So with this video, I hope that I've been able to shed some light on this scam that has been going on in the community, and I really wish that you don't fall for it. Now, if you are looking for quality coaching, I don't do it, but I have launched a platform where you guys can find a select few coaches that I've personally vetted and I've made sure that their credentials are right, I've made sure that they know what they're doing, and I've checked out a coaching session or two to make sure that they actually know their stuff. And these are probably the best coaches you can find in a community. If you are interested in checking this out, you can hop on over to otter.coach and book a session today. The slots are filling up really fast, so make sure that you book a session before you get stuck on the waiting list. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like and subscribe. And of course, I'll see you all tomorrow.